It's a Friday morning. It is about 9.30. We had quite the rain the last couple of days. We've had quite the snow in the mountains as well. These pictures are from Blue Canyon, where it's snowing right now at approximately 9.30 in the morning. Snow level, Blue Canyon, 4,700 feet. So pretty low elevation snow, and that means traveling in the mountains is going to be a little bit, a little bit sketchy, certainly throughout the day today, a winter storm warning there. Our weather winding down, big surf along the coast. When's the next rain? Not for a while. And then frost advisories, and we're back into more of a stable weather pattern. But it was quite the event. Southern California, my friends, you guys got, in some ways, a more intense storm, not wind-wise, but in terms of um, rainfall accumulations over the last 24 hours, you guys really loaded them up. So we'll look at those as well. Again, Blue Canyon traffic is moving, but uh, it's a slow go up there for sure. I got this camera. We'll see. So this is this is Palisades. I don't know if it's going to work, but there was a guy I was watching him this morning, which is kind of weird, but still what I do. But I was watching him dig this out. I mean, <laughs> like, and he was digging it, but I think he they changed the camera. But it was, I mean, it's, that's the top. It's up at, oh, there it is. Yeah. So that's up at the um, a high camp up at Palisades. And he's not digging. And where is my boy? He's not there anymore. But it was deep. It's deep. So over a couple feet of snow at the top, the first foot of snow was kind of wet. Um, higher water content, which is good for runoff. But for skiers, the last foot, I am told, Mr. Hudson up at Palisades this morning called me in, or talked to me and said, listen, we got a foot of fresh Got a foot of wet and a foot of just aspeny powder. So if you're scared, oh, there's my there's my boy right there, and he's got the machine out, which is awesome. I hope. Yeah, he was doing it with a shovel earlier. Oh, then dang it! I was <laughs> when you see the guy with the shovel. There he is. Okay, where's my boy? Keep changing, but you see how deep it is here. Anyway, so that's the storm. Um, there's big surf along the coast. This is Mavericks. This is again live as of 9:30 in the morning. Um, Mavericks is 10 to 20 feet, 15 to 20 feet. They're calling it 20 to 25. You're going, well, where's, where is it? Well, the tide's coming up, so it's not going to be good for a while. The winds have been robust, and so that is got blown out. So you're going, well, why is nobody surfing? I would suspect this afternoon, late this afternoon, when the winds kind of back down and mellow out a little bit, I suspect Mavericks is going to show, start, they may do some towing in. Um, it's big though. So we'll keep an eye out for that. Towing in, that's when a wave, when they get big like this, you, there's a certain, there's a physics component to this where you can't physically match the speed of a wave to catch it. So back in the day, Laird Hamilton and Derek Doner and those guys over in Hawaii figured out, oh, we'll just tow in, right? Because we can match the speed. We're like a water skier. Um, so, which is, yes, in this case, it's brave stuff, man. It's brave stuff, especially if you come off. Um, okay, so here is the satellite image. This is, again, 9.30 this morning. But you can see the west slope of the Sierra Nevada. That's snow and the cloud cover. It's snowing up there. And it's, it's, most of the day, it's going to be snowing. And that has to do with that orographic effect, right? And one of the things we talk about, I just, I'm going to say this one more time. Maybe you'll get it. It's a difficult concept. But um, when storms come across and they hit hills, they get orographically lifted mechanically lifted or graphically by the mountains and they they push more snow out but they also especially when you get to the sierra nevada or higher mountains they get the storms get pushed up but sierra nevada is high right nine ten thousand feet so it pushes the storm up and then actually pushes the storm up against the bottom of our atmosphere or the top of the bottom of the tropos or the top of the troposphere which is that we live in the troposphere so it hits the top and there's an inversion there so the storm stops and it keeps pushing up, so it keeps getting fatter and fatter and fatter and fatter, slows down. This is that whole conservation of angular momentum. When an ice skater is spinning, right, that's the storm as it goes through the Bay Area and through the valley. It's cooking, it's cooking, it's moving. As soon as it gets pushed up against the top of the, the troposphere, it gets fat, spreads out. The arms come out on the ice skater, and the storm slows down, and it, gets, and it stays put. And so that's what you're seeing up in the west slope of the Sierra Nevada. I love that. Because when you really think about it, you go, oh, that's what's going on. Why is, it, why is it stormy? Like right now, it's not too bad in the Bay Area, right? It's been nasty up there, and it will be nasty up there for a while today because of conservation of angular momentum. I know it's a big term, but it's not. Just Google it. Google a, a YouTube video on it or something. But it's, 
it's very interesting. And that's what's happening on this West Slope of Sierra Nevada. It happens to a certain extent, other places too, but you need, you need some big, you need like the Tetons, you need some big hills. So here's a little activity up around Bernie, uh, Southern California, you guys, you're getting a little sunshine down there. Highs today in Southern California are gonna be in the low 60s. Highs in San Francisco, San Jose are gonna be in the upper 50s. And then tomorrow we'll get into the low 60s. So nicer weekend ahead. The, the blue represents a frost advisory. That's a no duh. That is what we get after this time of year, after every storm we get a frost advisory. And then the, the coveted and uh, appreciated by surfers, uh, high surf advisory along the coast, the greens right there. So very, very um, good sized surf. And then there's a the couple flood watches out and there's the high surf advisory as well down into Santa Barbara and Long Beach. Uh, wind is that brown color, um, but everything's mellowing out. But be careful on the coast for sure because there's a lot of water moving, the tide's going high, then it goes out and it drops out pretty aggressively. So if you're a crab fisherman, I know who you are. Uh, Dude, just be careful today. Don't go, don't go out on the high tide for sure. Um, and then here is, uh, this is the last 24 hours. So let's take a peek at some of these numbers. Now these are color coded differently because it's 48 hour totals, not 24 hour totals. So here is Mount Tamalpais, four inches of rain in the last couple of days. So you're like, wow, that's, that's, that's pretty manageable, right? So this storm really three inches up in Petaluma, two inches up in Novato. Marin County or um, Richmond got almost three inches of rain. Boy, they really did well in this storm. Two and a half inches in the Santa Cruz Mount or in the um, Oakland Hills. San Francisco, 1.26, inch and a quarter. So these numbers for two days, not half bad, right? And then what's going to happen is as we go further south, this was really, this storm was literally about Santa Cruz South, but you see some four inch totals up in the Santa Cruz Mountains, five inches above Saratoga. Look at Los Gatos, almost six inches in this zone here up around Saratoga area. So really significant rainfall. And we did have flood watches and advisories, uh, five and a half inches of rain here. This is over two days. And that's orographic lifting, right? You get on the backside of those hills, it's less rain because of the rain shadow. And then we go further south. And I hope I'm not going too slow through these. Look at this, Santa, uh, up in the Santa Lucia's, up in um, Big Sur, up over nine inches of rain, right? So now it's getting, it's getting spicy. Eight inches of rain up around uh, San Antonio Reservoir. So these coastal hills, and then this is the part that I was watching this morning. And these are two day totals, but look at, look at, um, LA down by above up, up in the hills above LA five and a half inches of rain up in the burn scars up around Lake Castaic uh Santa Bar oh I'm sorry that's not Lake Castaic that's up um, further up north but you got the idea in the hills above Santa Barbara four and five inches of rain that is a lot man and for those guys and then you get down further and you're seeing these are 48 hour totals couple of inches of rain which again I don't know if you saw any of the video out of LA last night but some of the rain totals or some of the um some of the, uh, what do you call it? The, the video of the storm pipes and the drainage is just bursting because as a couple of you guys had mentioned before in the comments, like LA does not drain. They do not drain well, they never have. Well, they probably did back before we changed everything. Okay, so here is um, Santa Barbara. This is the last 24 hours because I wanted to show you how much, this is down in Southern California again. Let me back it up. But you can see, so in 24 hours, they got significant rainfall in LA. I showed you 48 first, I wanted to see storm totals, but now I want you to see what LA went through last night. Five inches of rain up in um, Rancho Santa Margarita, or three and a half inches. I mean, these are significant rain totals. Laguna Beach, over an inch of rain. So they're cleaning up down there. That was a big storm. You're getting a break finally. This is the uh, GFS, 500 millibar, looking at the jet stream, looking for anything model. And here we go, I'll put a loop on it, right? Or I'll put a circle around. I know it's hard to see the state, just find the circle. Cause again, models are not, they're, 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 they're not precise. They try to be, but they can't be. That's what we do when I talk about grid size, it's a grid size. If you could get a grid size down by to a foot by a foot, then you got yourself something. Then you then you can pretend to be precise. But these models, the, the model I'm using, most of the models right now that I have access to are not, they're not granular. They just can't, they're as granular as they can be. 
but someday we'll go into model um, how they how they get how models how they get put together. It's very complex. It's awesome actually, like the omega equation and stuff. But it's also you realize oh there's a lot of placeholders here in terms of real time numbers. You're kind of having to extrapolate. So okay, so here we are. Here is the jet stream. Here is this afternoon. See California in the clear. High pressure ridge bumps up. Here is Sunday morning. Little tweak goes by, but nothing. Here is Tuesday morning, nothing. Inside slider, maybe some snow in the mountains, but nothing, nothing big. Now that's a little something. That's on Wednesday afternoon, we'll see. And then, but overall, I don't see any big hits, do you? It looks pretty, that looks, that's it right there. So the next really big headline, <laughs> atmospheric river, atomic bomb, or whatever they call it, storms, um, this is a more towards February 28th. So that's right. So we'll see how that goes. That's a ways out, but we're looking for it. So here we go in terms of rainfall, sea level pressure. Here we are this afternoon. Here we are tomorrow morning. Saturday looks good. What's that? Nothing. That's Saturday, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. So right, not much. There's, there's a little something there. That's what we were looking at. That's on the 20th. And then I think we'll see that 28th event show up here somewhere. No, it didn't show up. Okay, well, anyway, so we're dry for a while. Uh, this is the Golden Gate Bridge. This is uh, uh, San Diego University of San Diego Alert California cameras, which I love. What you can see right here is see the white water out at the point. That's Point Bonita. Anytime you can see white water from this far away, that means the surf is big and dangerous and gnarly. Swell right now is running, Mavericks is 17 feet, 17 feet. 17 feet, 17 seconds, I believe, which is big. Um, they're calling it up to 20 feet. Ocean Beach is about the same, 15 feet, 17 seconds. The big 17 seconds is the interval. When you get that big, big interval, 17 seconds, you've got yourself some. Most swells tend to be around 10 or 12 seconds. Just seems I just average that out, which is, but when you get into the big ones, they're 17 to 20 seconds. And then this wave size tells you how big the wave is and just gives you an idea of, what you got okay so here's uh, black butte here is lake or uh, mount shasta snow in the trees love seeing that um up in the hills we've got snow on the mountain this is castle peak and they're moving the cars but i'm telling you if i was i don't know if i'd want to drive up today probably drive up tomorrow morning or late tonight um, but it's going to be icy but cars are moving and the snow again it's snowing pretty hard right now it will continue to snow hard for the next few hours and then by this afternoon we'll begin to back off this is king's beach and the snow is coming down you can kind of see it's a little bit melty um, but not bad looks like it's easy to move around uh, in uh, the lake tahoe area right now this is ocean beach we talked about it um, i think hmm you can kind of see the outside bars breaking. I know they are breaking. You just can't see them. So when, it, when the swells get big like this, the outer bars break. The potato patch, you've probably heard of that. Um, and when you start seeing white water out here, uh, that is terrifying. <laughs> but it's also an indication there are sandbars offshore, way offshore at Ocean Beach because of all the sediments that come out the Golden Gate Bridge, right? It's a big giant river mouth. All that sediment kind of gets deposited down the coast. And so you have great sandbars for surfing, but you also have some deep water sandbars. And these deep water sandbars show up about now when you've got, um, when you've got, you know, really giant swells. Swell's gonna drop off tomorrow. Today's the peak size. Okay, where's that you say? Hmm, Lake Orville. I was checking the reservoir levels just because it's interesting. Um, the lake, Shasta and Orville, two largest surface reservoirs, very important to California's water supply, extremely important to California's water supply um, outside the aquifers, which are more important than the snowpack in the mountains. Um, but they are mainly for flood control, right? That's what they, that's what the, the um, I can't remember if it was the Bureau of Reclamation. I can't remember who built those. California Water Project, I guess. But anyway, the lakes are, this is Lake Orville. It looks full, but it's only about 82% of capacity. That's for flood control. Lake Shasta is 82% of capacity as well. Um, but you can see the lake, a big move up. And the reason, right, you obviously know why they why they leave room. They gotta leave room, right? Because if we get, we will see more big rain and they're trying to um, mitigate that. This is Santa Clara. And the sun is trying to come out. The clouds are clicking through. It's going to be a beautiful day. Thanks for hanging in. 
Um, so what did, I, what did I say? I said a lot of stuff. Big surf, big snow, Ooh, avalanche danger is going to be an issue for sure in the mountains uh, next couple of days, especially with that heavy layer of snow that fell last night with that lighter layer on top and then underneath that heavy layer of the ice. Um, and then we're going to be dry, really right through the weekend with some cooler overnights, maybe some freeze, freezing temperatures in some places. Okay, thanks for joining me. I will see you back here maybe tomorrow. Maybe, what's tomorrow? Today, tomorrow's my day off, I think. Yeah, so I'm going to, I probably won't do anything tomorrow. See you back here maybe on Sunday.